Hey everybody, Matt here. Thanks for stopping by and welcome to Imagine Then Make. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made a tablet stand using some reclaimed particle board. So here are the materials I'm going to use along with a collection of manual tools. So I started by sharpening my plain iron. I sharpen right now manually with a piece of sandpaper that's been glued down to a flat piece of MDF. Once the plain iron is sharp, then I can start using the block plane to take the finish off of the particle board. This was a piece of particle board from a real inexpensive, put it together yourself kind of piece of furniture. I think it was part of a dresser. So here's the particle board all cleaned up. This square piece of particle board is left over from a previous project. It's just very convenient for me to use because it is in the shape of a square, so all I needed to do was cut the diagonal to make the two triangles I needed for the stand. To cut the two triangles, I just used the pole saw after clamping the square piece of particle board to my new workbench. With the triangles cut, just doing some sanding. I'm going to use an inch and three eighths Forstner bit to cut or to drill a couple of finger holes in each of the triangular pieces. I'm using my Wen uh, 10 inch drill press to drill the holes. I've got the drill press set to the slowest possible speed, which happens to be 600 RPM. I'll leave a link on the screen for the review that I did of the Wen uh, drill press in case you missed it. You can see that I'm using a uh, vice grip type drill press clamp to hold the um, particle board triangle so it doesn't move around while I'm drilling a hole. The center of the second finger hole is very close to the outside edge of the first hole so it made getting that hole started a little bit of a challenge but got through it. You can really see in this shot how the particle board just kind of flakes apart as I'm drilling the holes. Back to sanding the triangles. I'm sanding these triangles with 60 grit garnet sandpaper. So I tried to do something a little bit unusual here. I honestly, I have tried this before and it worked out well, so I thought I'd give it a try again. Just taking some tight bond wood glue, and putting it in a silicone tray and then diluting it with water. I think when I put the water in, I put in too much water, so I kept having to add some more glue to try and make some, some kind of a mixture that's not quite as soupy. The idea here is to use the uh, other end of the silicone tool you see me stirring with and brush on the diluted glue onto the uh, particle board. The hope is that the glue will soak in and help keep the particle board a little bit more stable. So here I'm actually cutting the, um, it, I think it's actually a cardboard type material. This was actually used to make the bottom of a draw in the dresser. So you can see that I can cut it with just a utility knife, don't even need a saw.
So one of the issues with using this uh, draw bottom is that both sides of the material is coated, um, presumably to keep it from getting damaged if it happens to get wet. Uh, I knew I was going to use some wood glue, so I took the time to sand off the coatings to give the wood, uh, the wood glue something to stick to. Here I'm measuring out some particle board to actually be used as the base of the stand. One good thing about using particle board is, well, a couple of good things. First, it's typically free because it's from furniture that people don't want anymore. And secondly, it typically is pretty flat and pretty square. So here you can see I've got the piece clamped up in my workbench vise and once again I'm using the Japanese style pole saw to just cut along the cut line. So after making the first cut and then turning the part around in the vise, you can see that it was it was it's sticking up quite high. So I had to add another support. In a video a while back, I experimented with making a joint that would hold three separate pieces of two by four together, with all of the faces being flush with one another. Well, this is uh, that piece that I did in, the, in that other video. It just happened to work out uh, quite nicely as a secondary support behind this piece of particle board. All right, so the base is cut. Now, in this shot, I'm showing uh, a kind of glue up, and I realized that there's a bunch of things that I did kind of off camera. So um, you'll see in some subsequent shots that I wound up cutting some slats of that cardboard type material to go on the front face of the two triangles. It's kind of hard to describe, but the only way that I could clamp those pieces while the glue dried was to come up with sort of this cockamamie arrangement where I'm using a uh, weight to press down uh, to keep the slats in position while the glue sets. In an effort to not have the base pop off the triangles, I added a couple more clamps. Those are the hand clamps that you see there. And again, when I, I glued the triangles to the base off camera. So in this shot, you can see the uh, slats that I was talking about. So in this shot, you're going to see me use a flush cut saw to trim off the ends of the slats. With the ends trimmed off, it's time for more sanding. Now I'm ready to trim the base to size, and I'm going to use, once again, the Japanese style pole saw to make a flush cut. This was the first project where I actually did so much flush cutting. It worked out extremely well, and uh, it was actually a lot of fun to do. Here's a shot of the uh, sandpaper I've switched up to. This is actually 50 grit garnet style sandpaper. Now I'm ready to flush cut the other side of the base. So in this shot you see me using my right hand to push the flat blade up against the triangular piece while I'm starting to make the cut. 
Once the cut gets started, then I can remove my right hand and just use both hands on the handle of the saw and finish off the cut. Back to more sanding. I decided I wanted to round off these two front corners, so I used a fender washer to mark the arc that I wanted to cut. Here I'm actually using a rasp to remove the material and to form the uh, rounded corner, and then I'll follow up with some sandpaper just to smooth it out a little bit more. The rasp I use is nothing fancy. I just picked it up at my local Home Depot and I'm actually using the flat part of the rasp. I think the rounded corners came out pretty well. Here I'm just using the block plane and then following up with the sanding block just to try and make those two pieces that are glued together in the front of the stand as flush as reasonable. I needed to do some more smoothing of the finger holes, so I wound up taking a, I think that was a 3 8 bolt, and wrapping it in sandpaper and using that as my sanding block. So here's a shot of the tablet stand so far. Time for a test run. Not bad, but I definitely want to make some changes. The biggest thing is I didn't like the way the edge of the tablet was supported. I also want to be able to have the charging cord plugged in while the tablet is in the stand. So it was back out to the shop to make some changes. So here you can see the little ridge that was left after I sawed off that front block. So I went back to the block plane just to clean that up. All set now. So in this shot you can see that I glued on a much longer uh, front support for the tablet. I also marked out where the cutouts need to be made so the charging cable could be plugged in. Just like before, it's back to the smaller uh, flush cut saw. All right, so that long block is trimmed up. So in this shot, I had to do a little bit of uh, unusual clamping so that I could trim up the very front piece. To trim up this front piece, I went back to the larger Japanese style pole saw. Once again, I used my right hand to kind of steady where the blade was starting to cut. Once I got a, uh, a channel, a small channel cut into the piece, then I could move my right hand away. It was kind of a shame to see my nice rounded corners get cut off, but hey, that's what I needed to do. So here's a shot that shows that new front block, and I hope you can see how the front edge of the tablet now is going to be supported in a different way. Now I had to get even a little bit more creative to hold the stand while I cut out the space for the charging cable. I wound up using a scrap piece of plywood and just slid it through each of the two finger holes on each side and then used some clamps on either end to hold the tablet stand in place. It was a little bit of a balancing act, but I got it done. In this shot, I'm using an even finer Japanese style pole saw. It's got a very thin kerf and very sharp teeth.
Once I finished with the two outside cuts to mark where the charging cable will go, I made two other cuts in between there just to make it easier to remove the waste material. Here you can see those extra cuts I was talking about. So back to a little bit of a balancing act, I needed to shift where the tablet stand sat on the workbench so I could use a chisel which meant loosening those two clamps and sliding the whole stand over a little bit. Alright, so now I'm ready to chisel out the rest of the waste material. I sized the gap to match the size chisel I'm using, which happens to be three quarters of an inch. I think this chiseling process worked out really well. I was able to, able to clean out the waste material with really no issues. And it's back to more sanding. Here's a shot of the tablet stand on a small Lazy Susan. Here are some more shots of the uh, front block that's going to be used to support the edge of the tablet. Here's a shot of the underside of the tablet stand. You can see where the notch is cut out for the charging cable. Here you can see that the charging cable easily plugs in while the tablet is on the stand. So I'm going to call this prototype tablet stand finished. She uses it every day, so to me that's a big success. Bye.